say something, you say no. All right, thanks for staying with us. And uh, this is still News Hub. Uh, we still have our guests across locations, Abuja, Port Harcourt, and our Lagos guests who joined us on Skype. At uh, this time, let's turn our attention to Ngozi Okonjo Iwiala and her, uh, let's call it an appointment to the World Trade Organization. She's a nominee for that position. What advantage will he have for Nigeria? Let's head to Abuja, Abuja studio. Uh, we're looking at what advantage it have for Africa and Nigeria in particular. All right, we know that um, from some experts, the calculation is that since Africa is not um, perceived as a partisan player when we talk about trade deals, China, America, and all of that, that an African candidate, if Ngozi takes that position, will be a, you know, a, a good, let's say, middleman to strike the balance between these two countries or any country in the World Trade Organization. I want to know, would you consider this a very huge tax for Ngozi Okonjo-Iwiala if she emerges as the, as the person to lead the WTO? Uh, thank you once again. I believe in the capacity of the former, former Honorable Minister of uh, Finance in Nigeria, uh, that's uh, uh, Ms. Okonjo-Iwiala. And uh, based on our antecedents, not just uh, this position we're looking at, but because of what she's done in the near past, I can tell you that uh, based on what she's done, I strongly believe that this is the, the kind of person the world needs now. And I've also seen the demonstration by Nigerian government, the commitment uh, for that nomination of a person to represent not just Nigeria, but Africa as a whole. And when you look at the uh, organization she's represented, uh, Nigeria and indeed the whole world at, uh, in the near past, Mrs. Iwiala have been very consistent and be, have become a professional. So do I think she will do a very good job? I strongly believe so. Recall that we all talk about debt forgiveness, even though things have changed right now, and the kind of debt forgiveness Mrs. Iwiala got may not be gotten by Nigeria anytime soon. So she, she, she championed that debt forgiveness for Nigeria because she was part of the system and she knows how Nigerian representatives should negotiate for us to have such uh, forgiveness. And in, in, in the recent past, Nigeria has not even had someone to be at the apex or at the ends of affairs when it comes to world trade organization. This is an opportunity for us. I expect Nigerian government and all well meaning Nigerians to even lobby uh, in terms of uh, speaking with other members of World Health Organization, for us to have our hope, not just because she's a Nigerian, not just because she's an African, but because of her competence, because she's not a racist, she, she doesn't have any trace of racism in her or, or whatsoever. When you look at what is going on around the world, just before the pandemic showed up, the novel coronavirus, you see America has sanctioned China four different times with all manner of tariffs. Why? Because President Trump realized that America debts, I mean, America trade deficits to China was over 500 billion US dollars. So put a perspective to it. Nigerian GDP is between 375 to 410 billion dollars. We are not talking of Nigerian budget. Nigerian budget is about 30 billion US dollars. We are talking of Nigerian GDP. What America had in trade deficits to China was up approximately 500 billion US dollars. We need an umpire that is neither American nor from Asia. And these are two major countries. The next Oh, the analysis has to come back because that was just the peak of it. Please come back uh, so that you run with that. Okay, it's back. Please go ahead. to come to is Africa. And when you look at the kind of people oh. the, the network is not friendly this morning. Uh, we really need to get to the bottom of that. A very fantastic analysis there. We hope to get back to you so we get a full dose of it. We're still taking a look at the nomination of the former finance minister, Nigeria's former min finance minister, Ngozi Okonjo-Wela to be the Director General of the World Trade Organization. 
Uh, many people are, don't, do not even know what this is all about. People are like, okay, we know she worked with World Bank and all of that. What about this World Trade Organization? We still have uh, journalists in, uh, from Port Harcourt. We have like, Lizazi, is he still there? Lizazi is still in, in Port Harcourt. Thank yes. you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Now, um, for many people who did not know, primarily what the World Trade Organization does uh, is to promote free trade and by lowering tariffs and other barriers. If we have Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Wala, you know, emerging the Director General of WTO, you did just hear that uh, we're, we're always not aligned, although we are, some would say we are aligned in some instances. How do you expect her to ensure that uh, every aspect of trade among nations uh, that she brings something very peculiar, something unique. What are those things you think she can do differently that will make uh, her really uh, successful in our uh, uh, quest to make a change? Uh, to start with, I, I, I think she is the most competent person for that job from Africa. Given that, given that she has been the number two person in the World Bank, She's presently sitting on the board of Twitter. She has a wide experience of financial dealings in the whole world. She has a global view of the finance sector global in the whole world. And she's well experienced because she has been in the World Bank. And you know that trade, finance is the financial implication. Is what I want to talk about world trade. The financial implication of world trade is most time what the finance institution deals with, and she's very knowledgeable in that. Ngozi will bring to bear her wealth of experience in other financial, in world financial management. And I think she's going to do the job better. The only part I want to plead with African countries is that, one, I discovered that Egypt has a candidate. We've also discovered that Kenya is not wanting to support her. So we want the African Union or African countries to ride around these two countries so that she can have a block vote from, Af from Africa. And I also think she's the best person because the world trade between Asia, China to be specific, and US, and then the European Union, she's not in any of those three blocks. And so we need a neutral person that is not of American block, that is not of the Asian block, that is not of a European block, to pilot the affairs of this trade organization so that there will be some level, pl level playing ground, so that there will be better management of trade agreements, so that it will not be lopsided and sentiments will be taken out of trade transactions globally. So I feel that the, 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 our, our own Gozi is a better candidate for this job, given her wealth of experience and her understanding of the politics and trade and finance of the entire world. Lizazi, be before you go off that why you did mention that you feel that uh, she will be neutral. That was what uh, our other resource person also said. What about the fact that she's African? Many people th believe that when you put Africans at uh, the helms of affairs, they're always uh, very much uh, very active to prove a point that they can. But in this uh, situation where we have superpowers, having issues economically. We, have, we just heard that America to, to, the, to China has about $500 billion deficits, and the European Union too are there, the blocks are there all over. Do you think she can withstand the storm if they ever come in taking decisions to ensure that everybody you know, comes to terms with how the world trade should be run? If she has been able to hold the number two position in the World Bank, and have been able to navigate the politics, the global politics at the level of the World Bank. I think she has the capacity to head and manage the activities of the World Trade Organization. That is also why I've told us that she doesn't belong to the three strong blocks. She's not of the Asian Tiger, she's not of an American bloc, she's not of the European Union, and she's of Africa. I also believe she has the competence. All right, Lizazi. Over the years that she... All right, uh, Lizazi, we'll come back to you if time permits. Let's speak with Ethan Wani on this one. 
Uh, Vincent Wani, before now, we knew that uh, President Muhammad Buhari had nominated, uh, you know, Frederick Aga to be in that position of the World Trade uh, Organization's uh, chairperson. And all of a sudden, Ngozi Okonjo Iweala's name came to the forefront. Uh, people are saying she's a better candidate, but we've seen other aspirants for that same position uh, from Kenya and Egypt, where this other Nigerian maybe might step down. Uh, do you think really that um, Ngozi Okonjo Iweala is the right man or woman for the job? Because some critics have said her strength is just in finance and not in trade. Thank you very much. Um, kindly permit me to also at least use this opportunity to congratulate our very own, a woman that has been shattering the glass ceiling uh, all over the world. And this is another milestone to her. You know, having said that, yes, uh, our president withdrew uh, Michelle Lem. Uh, nominee and replaced with uh, another one. We have other contenders from other parts of Africa, uh, the Mahmoud from uh, Egypt and the other one from uh, Kenya. That's crazy. When you are fighting a global war, this is a positive war now, when you, when, when you are cont contesting for something good at the global stage, you put forward your best in the best. And that is with due respect to the first nominee. Um, that uh, President Mohamed Buhari actually uh, put forward. You know, but they've been able to look around and see the challenge of click, uh, clicking that position. You know, so, okay, who do we have that have the best possibility to get it? And that is when uh, uh, Kondo Wala's name uh, uh, came to fore. So she's eminently qualified. The, uh, the first nominee also eminently qualified. Well, somebody is better qualified. Somebody that have this global... Um, uh, global reputation, global brand, and also some that have also done it in our own home country over time, you know, from Abbas and Joe's administration to Yara Dua to Good Luck, you know, and uh, uh, even a uh, post Good Luck administration all over the world, we've seen what she's been and uh, so for, for, for and, 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 and we've seen the type of um, um, happiness, praise all over from, from even the perceived opposition, you know, to her when this uh, announcement was made. You know, so the most important task now is for us to know that this is not, the game is not over. The game is just the beginning. At least we need, still need to do the first job by ensuring that other African countries, including Egypt and Kenya, also have candidates, find a way to rally around us. Because this is international, world-class politics. We need to play that politics. And the first thing is that African countries must unite behind one candidate. That must be achieved because it's not all of Angola, say, you know. It has happened before when she contested for uh, World Bank uh, president. She didn't get it. You know, we will ensure with prayer and everything advice to ensure that she doesn't suffer another near miracle syndrome. Because we know that apart from what this um, role will do for Africa, it's also a good branding for Nigeria. Right, international. Vincent. Vincent, you, you said it's good to put our best foot forward, but according to the Egyptian government, who also has a candidate for that position, they said they published a communique uh, which said that um, for Nigeria to have withdrawn Aga's uh, candidature meant that Nigeria had forfeited its chance to participate in the race. Uh, don't you think that this will also be considered by other countries who we expected to back Nigeria since we've um, uh, withdrawn that of Aga? That's what I'm saying, this is politics. The good news is that Nigeria did not violate any rule, any WTO rule in withdrawing and replacing. We were able to withdraw and replace still within the time frame um, up until May 8. You know, we, we, did not, we did not circumvent any of the um, underlying rule to withdraw or to replace. You know, somebody I also have another candidate still need to say something, you know, to discredit or disqualify the other person. And that is what Egypt is doing. And good, good news is that the WTO have accepted this withdrawal and replacement of candidate by Nigeria. So, you know, so which means that the protest from Egypt doesn't really hold water. You know, but beyond that, this is also the time for us to walk behind the door. You know, get to get Egypt back to track to support us. Get Kenya, get South Africa, and every other parts of the of Africa. You know, we, we if we're able to do that, we understand that. Um, our own candidates have a strong footing from America and a strong footing in the EU. 
you know, because we need everybody to rally around the Nigerian candidates to get this. For, for Christ's sake, this is the first time if we get it that an African, and those an African, not to even talk an African, a woman will be heading that organization. You know, so it will be a very good one. Like I said, it will add to branding as a nation for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, Africa also need to increase our share of trade. You know, to do with account for two percent, two to three percent, two point five to three percent of global trade. You know, whereas our population is about fifteen percent, that is Africa. We need to increase our share of global trade and trade not only on solid min on minerals but on processed uh, uh, material. We need to feed this uh, position and this opportunity. Need to feed into the workings and the efficacy of our. Uh, after uh, Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement that will take effect any moment from now, if not for the uh, setback we have because of the COVID-19. Right. So Thank it you. is a win-win for Nigeria, it is a win-win for Africa, and it is a win-win for, 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 for the, uh, every, every woman in the world. If uh, Mr. Sokon joins us, will finally take this opportunity. Okay. I, I'm sure that, of course, all Nigerians will be rooting for her. Everyone should be. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the call will be that of the World Trade Organization to declare who would be the next Director General. Yeah, that's come um, sometime in July. That's when the nominations are still accepted. But thank you to all our gentlemen across locations, Vincent Wani, Dr. Vincent Wani, an economist, and also Paul Alaje in Abuja. We sincerely apologize for that bad network there. And for our Port Accord guest, Lezazi uh, to uh, Tobira, also an economist and the head of the department, Finance and Bank and University of Port Harcourt. Thank you for your time with us on this segment. Let's take a quick break and when we come back, we'll talk some security matters. Please stay with us. Say something, you say no.